everybody thank you for watching my channel today my name is Sarah and my channel is called Daughter Shelf. it's been a while since I filmed a haul um I don't actually know without looking back when the last time was and I'm really trying to be much more selective with the books that I haul now because um, I'm trying to get my TBR down I'm trying to have like um, more books read than hauled every month um, and it doesn't look like it from the state of this haul because there's a lot of uh, books here. Um, some of these are ones that I forgot before, so they're ones that I bought on Audible or Kindle and stuff, and so I forgot to um, mention them in, in previous months. So let's just get started. Um, so the first selection of ones that I have bought, um, some of these I'm just well, some, all of them I'm excited about. Some of them I really can't wait to read. Um, like the first one. So the first one is one that I found from um, Christiane Jane's channel, which I found fairly recently, and I love her channel. Um, she did a video about her top 10 fantasy books of all time. I'm pretty sure this was for where I got this one from. So this is a Japanese book called The Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimara. So this book is about um, six or seven, I can't remember, seven, six, seven, seven teenagers or children wake and they see that their bedroom mirrors are shining and they can actually go through their mirrors into a lonely castle and um, I think the children are all quite lonely and they have um, some time to try and discover the hidden secret in the castle but they have to leave the castle by 5pm so they don't get punished and they learn that the sort of one of the things they have to do is connect with each other and share their stories. Um, I'm getting quite into Japanese books recently and um, I trust Christy's recommendations and I'm really looking forward to this. Um, and then the next one was one I got in a charity shop, which is the second in the series and I haven't read the first in the series yet. But when I saw it in the same edition for like 50p, I couldn't help myself. Um, and that is the second book in the Discovery of Witches series or the All Souls trilogy. Um, so as I say, these are really big chunky books. I'm really looking forward to reading um, the first one and watching the TV series. And this is the second one in the series. The next one is a book that I first saw on um, Jessie from Bowties and Books channel and then I saw also on Christiane Jane's channel and I've really wanted to get it since I had to wait till Waterstone to get it and um, this is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clean. so this and it's got like nice yellow pages so this book is a what uh, I think it's a middle grade but maybe older middle grade but enjoyed by any age um and this book is about a man called Linus Baker who is a what's his actual job title so he works for the department in charge of magical youth and he monitors children in orphanages and then one day he's called to the house in the Cerulean Sea um, where there are six children who are classified as dangerous. And I believe that his life is kind of quite boring and colourless and bland to start off with and that his life just lights up by from these children. And I understand that this is a really uplifting and cosy and lovely book. And so ever since I heard Jessie and Christy to talk about this book I just couldn't wait to read it and I have now have it in my paws. The next book, now hold on let me go for this one next. So the next book is by an author who I have three of their books none of whom I have read and so I think that she may well be one of the authors that I pick that I have to read for 2022 because every year I tend to pick an author or two that I've got lots of their books and haven't tried yet um, and start reading them. So this one was again about 50p in our local charity shop um, and it was on my wish list already and this is Bellman and Black by Diane Setterfield. So I'm not 100% sure what this is about because I did read the back and it didn't really make a um, bit much clearer what it's about so I'll just read a little bit for you. It says a boy takes aim at a rook with his catapult. The impossible shot strikes home, the bird falls and with its death William Bellman must leave the eternity of childhood summers behind him and learn to be moral, 
Mortal. Mortal. I read that as moral, but it's mortal. A man weighed down by tragedy has a drunken conversation in a graveyard with a man who may or may not exist and an extraordinary bargain is sealed. A curious new shop opens in the heart of London, the first morning emporium, providing everything from coffins to umbrellas. Here William enters a collaboration with death, but who is the mysterious Mr Black and the rooks have they forgotten? So that sounds really gothic and creepy and great for sort of autumn and winter reading. So um, that is that one. I then have three books which I just literally just bought this morning. So I went and met my friend for breakfast this morning and we went to a, a charity bookshop that we've been to many a time and normally find really good books in there. And I bought three. I was very restrained. Um, so the first book... Um, the first book that I got um, is The Silver, Sp or Silver Sparrow by Tayari Jones. So the reason I wanted to get this one is because I read An American Marriage um, last month and gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. And I've heard that uh, Silver Sparrow is also very good. And it's got a very similar cover, which is nice. So I believe this is about um, a, a dad who is a bigamist and has two separate families. Um, and only one of the families knows about the other. And it's about these um, two girls who are sisters um, who then who then meet. So I'm uh, really excited to read that after how much I loved um, An American Marriage. Next one is a classic, which I was hoping to read for Victober until I found out that it wasn't written in the Victorian period, which is kind of annoying. But this is another one that Christy Ann Jones mentioned recently. And um, she it was in her video that she did about books to get you out of a slump short books to get you out of a slump and um this is a book that's a classic and it is frankenstein by mary shelley i really don't like the cover at all i think it's really grim but this was a pound so we just have to get over the fact that it's not the prettiest cover if i love it i can always get it in a nicer edition um and so yeah this is an epistolary novel about um victor frankenstein who um creates this unnamed monster and the consequences of that and then the final one I got this morning was an uh, uh, well, I was going to say it's an epistolary novel but it's not that's what I just said about the last one the next one that I got this morning is a Persephone book and I um I see a lot about Persephone books on booktube and I've never owned one and when I saw one I was like oh because it was only a pound again. So Persephone are lesser known titles which have been republished mainly by women and they all have these grey covers so you can spot them with silvery covers. So this one is called No Surrender by Constance Maud and when I read the um, blurb I thought it just sounded really interesting. So it says Jenny proceeded to make her bed rolling up the bedclothes on the shelf and fastening the bed up sideways against the wall. She had hardly finished this when from the adjoining cell came a faint sound like the notes of a call. Jenny darted to the corner from where the sound came. Kneeling on the floor, she put her ear where the hot water pipe passed through the wall. Again came the notes of a call, the prison greeting of the suffragettes. No surrender to the chimes of Big Ben. Jenny gave the answering chimes. No surrender. Good morning. How are you, dear Miss O'Neill? Splendid, only longing for a breath of fresh air, aren't you? Came the voice of Mary O'Neill. We must all go to the governor again today, sang out Jenny. Three days without air for speaking a few words at exercise isn't what political offenders ought to put up with. We've got to protest. So I don't think I've got any books about women's suffrage and that really interests me and great to try a Persephone book and for a pound, you cannot go wrong. So they're the ones I bought... Then I'm going to come on to, there's two that I was given. So both, one of them was by a patient, which was really kind. And I really need to um, read this so I can thank her properly. So my patient um, had a problem with her sense of smell. And she, um, she asked me to try and get her into a trial about it, which I did. And the problem got diagnosed. And she got me this book as a thank you, which was so sweet of her. And this is called uh, A World Without Smells by Lars Lindqvist. Um, and he was born with anosmia, which basically means no sense of smell. So he asks, imagine a world where smells don't exist. How does food taste without smells? And how do you avoid eating bad food? 
How do you keep yourself, your clothes and your home clean if there are no smells to tell you that things are dirty? In this book, he tells us about anosmic life, with, about living without a sense of smell, living in a world where everyone around him perceives a dimension that has never existed in his world. So I think this would be really interesting because I know like when I get a cold and I'm like all bunged up, um, I often can't taste or smell and... Um, I hate it. Like, I hate eating my food and not being able to taste it. It's really, like, you know, one of life's pleasures is eating. And um, not being able to smell, like, it must be just awful. And I guess he's never he's never had it. Um, but I'm really interested to... Cause even from the blurb, there's things that I'd never have thought of about cleanliness and about, um, about not knowing if something's off. Because, you know, if you sometimes you'd, like... Um, I don't drink cow's milk, but you know, from the days when I did, if you like smell the milk, I always just have a habit of smelling milk before I pour it in my tea or something because it's disgusting, like milk that's gone off. So if he can't smell that or taste it, I hadn't even ever thought of that before and stuff. So that's the first one. The second one, my colleague Philip at work, he often just passes books on to me when he's finished with them if he thinks I'll enjoy them. And he passed on this book to me. Um, which is a non-fiction and it is On Chapel Sands by Laura Cumming. So this book is about a little girl who went missing in 1929. She was taken from the beach and she was gone for five days, but then she was found fit and well and apparently unharmed. But she had no memory of what had happened to her in those five days. And then Laura Cumming is her mother is her daughter and she sort of delves into the mystery of what happened during her mother's disappearance so um and it says it unlocks a mystery almost a century old so that sounds interesting right so i then have some library books and then i will move on to kindle and audio um so library books i will try and be quick so if anybody watches the lovely Jen Campbell's channel, you will know that Jen Campbell loves Nikki French, the author, and she especially loves the Frida Klein series of crime books, and she has been trying to find a series which matches that for a long time, and I've wanted to try the first um, Frida Klein book for a long time, and I found it in the library and snapped it up. So this is called Blue Monday by Nikki French. All of the series are named after days of the week, and this is the first one. So basically, um, this is about the, the only the thing that pits me off this to start off with is that it's about a child abduction. And I find that really, really horrible to read about because as a parent, it's every parent's worst nightmare. And so that makes me kind of hesitant to start off with. But I'm hoping that I'll still get into it. Um, and she's basically a psychotherapist who um, who helps. She helps solve crimes. And I th I'm not sure the police actually like her or if that she just gets in their way but I'm not sure but it's supposed to be really good then another book that Jen recommended um which is a little book and I really wanted to buy it and then when I found it in the library again I was really pleased um and this is an older book thank you this is the house opposite by Barbara Noble and this is set in the Blitz in London and it's about a woman who is a secretary called Elizabeth um, and she's having an affair with her boss who is married um, and basically about I think just about sort of um, the experiences and their lives during that period of time um, and I believe that Barbara Noble actually did live through the Blitz so sh this will be an accurate description but Jen loved it and I trust her judgment and um, yeah I think it'll be really it's a really little book and I think I'll really enjoy that one then I have a book which I reserved um because Morgan Long who's another one of my booktubers um another one of my booktubers another one of my beloved booktubers who I I love her channel so much she recommended this book and I really liked the sound of it and this is um the crossroads of should and must find and follow your passion by L Luna so this is that we all have these choices all the time where we at, at a decision making point and we think um, I should do this, I really want to do that but I must do this and we have to decide like which thing, um, which one we follow, excuse me. Um, and it's about honouring your kind of inner voice. So it's got very 
lots of very lots it's got lots of um pictures and quotes and all that kind of thing and so it's not a book where it's going to take a long time to read at all um i'm really looking forward to getting to this because um morgan has talked of it so highly so there oh and there's one more library book um which is a book of short stories that i got for the reading women challenge um which i've nearly finished so one of the authors to read for this challenge was Layla abu Layla, and i got um elsewhere home which is a book of short stories so from abu dhabi to oxford street to scotland um so africa britain and the middle east basically featured in these stories they sound really interesting and um looking forward to that one as well so they're all of the physical books and i am going to whiz through the rest of them because i don't want to keep everybody here forever and also because it's half two and we have to go on the school run fairly soon so um let's do the kindles first so the first one is 1500 miles from the sun by johnny garza villa so this is a ya book i believe and this is about um a guy called jules who is gay and he um, has planned his whole life out i think he wants to escape the um the town where he was born and where he's grown up and he wants to go to ucla for university and he puts out a tweet which I think outs him um, and he ha he's kind of um, has to um, tell everybody that he's gay or it's revealed that he's gay and he then meets a guy online called Matt and he needs I think the worst his worst fears about coming out sort of start coming true and he needs Matt's support that Matt is 1500 miles away so that's that one then another one that I'm really excited about um, is Homegoing by Yar Jessie. So I read her latest book and I really enjoyed that book. And the premise of Homegoing like just fascinates me because I love books like this. So this is set in Ghana and it follows multi-generations over I believe about 300 years. And it starts with two half-sisters, Effie and Essie. Sorry, Effa and Essie. Effa is um, married off to a slave owner and goes to lead um, a life in, in London in a wealthy environment. And Essie is sold as a slave. And it basically follows those two past in the family tree down generations and generations to see the consequences of how their lives split and how and what happened and i just think that sounds so fascinating and i love those kind of books where a, a, an incident happens and it splits into what happened and what happened or what could have happened for the same person or how what happened for two different people so i can't wait to read that and it's got really really good reviews on goodreads as well and um, then there's Grown by Tiffany Jackson. So this is a YA book, which I love the cover. It's about a young woman called Enchanted, who is an R&B singer. And she has a um, either a manager or a producer or something who's an older guy called Corey. And I think he abuses her or assaults her or something. And he basically, one day he's murdered and she can't remember anything about the night before and the police come knocking on her door. And I believe this has sort of parallels to the R. Kelly um, abuse scandals that have happened. Then I have A Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. So I read The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil last year and really enjoyed it. And this is her next book. Um, this is about a girl called Nell. Um, it's set, I think, in around sort of Victorian times. And Nell has very freckled skin. And she is a flower picker for her job. And one day her dad sells her to the circus as... Um, as a leopard girl because she has freckles um which resemble like leopard spots too so she becomes one of the sort of um wonders of the circus and so in the past obviously we know like in history people with disfigurements um of different kinds or um people who had different medical conditions were often um you know in the circus as like freak shows which is horrendous um but this book so talks about that um, and I think there may be a romance with someone else in the circus as well. Um, I've heard Jen Campbell talk about this book and I think she was a sensitivity reader for the book um, because she has a disfigurement. Um, so that one will be I'm sure very good because her last book was. 
The next one is one that I bought because so Joe Smith, um, my lovely friend, and I are doing a buddy read for Victober, which we do every year, and. When I was looking for inspiration for Victober and I was looking at all the authors, everybody on there was white. And I just thought it would be so nice if I could read a book by somebody who wasn't white. Um, and the only book we could really find by, was um, The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole mm. on Many Lands by Mary Seacole. And she sounds like an amazing woman. She was born in 1805 in Jamaica. Um, she was biracial. She um, travelled around the world as a businesswoman and as a nurse. And she was um, a nurse during the Crimean War. She promoted things like um, simple hygiene and good food and to try and help people's recoveries. And she sounds like an incredible woman who um, I would really love to read about. So I purchased that book. Uh, then I purchased... Um, Mediocre by Idioma Oliro. Um, this is the legacy of white male America. So it's basically a book about um, the fact that white men have been in charge for as long as we can remember and the sort of destructive legacy that they've left behind for um, women and especially non-white women. So um, that one I'm sure will be very educational and interesting. So mediocre I got on Audible, the next one, the, the rest of them are all from Audible. I have The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare, which I am really excited about. This is about a young girl called Aduni who lives in Nigeria. She's in a very poor um, community and she gets the chance to go to school and she wants to use her voice to fulfil her dreams. And it's about how she overcomes hardship, tries to find joy in her life and and follow her dreams which sounds wonderful i then have um something girl by jd taylor which is the second in the frogmorton farm series so the first one is called nothing girl and um i read that and loved it last year and it's about a girl called jenny who has a stammer and she's and a lot of anxiety and about how she has an abusive um, family and how she kind of escapes the family and meets a man who she loves. And it's a really cosy story and I loved it so much. And this is the second one in the series. Then we have three more to go, guys. Three more. Not too bad. Um, the next one, another audible, is Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. So this one I've heard lots of good things about. Um, this is a non-fiction book and it's about how feminism is often very white-centric and non-intersectional. And Mickey Kendall is looking a lot more about how feminism should be intersectional, about all women, be they um, black, white, um, women of colour whether they're gay, straight, queer, trans, cis, um, how it should be much more inclusive and also how we often overlook just the basic rights of people having medical care and safe food and um, enough money and a home and all of those kind of things. They're often like kind of white privilege ideas that we have in um, feminism. So another one that I will really look forward to listening to. Another non-fiction I have is um, The Meaning of Mariah Carey by Mariah Carey. Um, I got this in an Audible sale. I listened to the um, sample, that's the word, and really enjoyed it. She narrates it herself. And given that last year, one of my, sorry, so far this year, one of my favourite books has been Alicia Keys' memoir. And the year before, one of my favourite books was Jessica Simpson's memoir. I think I'm going to love Mariah Carey's just as much from listening to their sample. And the final book I have, well done if you've made it this far, is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue um, by V.E. Schwab. This is one I heard about of um, on Jessie's channel again of Books and Bowties. Um, so um, Addie LaRue, this is set in 1714 in France and she makes a deal with somebody, the devil, somebody, to, to have eternal life if, but nobody will ever remember her. And so she lives through 300 or so years of meeting people and then instantly being forgotten by them until one day she comes across a man or a boy who... Um, remembers her name and it seems like this may be broken so that is my rather huge huge haul um 
if you've read any of these books, you have any thoughts about these books, if I should prioritise any of these books, or you have any thoughts in general, or you'd just like to say hi, please do so, because I love anyone's comments, um, as long as they're friendly comments, obviously, um, I would love to hear from you. Um, I am going to insert a little clip here now of me picking my Victober read from a little TBR jar, so if you don't want to watch that, I will sign off now. Um, if you do, then stick around for another minute or so, um, so you can see what I will be reading for Victober. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll speak to you soon. Bye! Okay, so I've got my um, little tub here with six books in for Victober. The good thing is they're cheap online or free online and they're on Audible. Now you have the extra membership thing. There's also lots of them for free on Audible so I can listen and read, which is good. So let's pick. Let me just give them a good, a good shake. And I'm picking this one, which is Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So yeah, that's that is our choice for Victober. Um, should full title the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So that is what we are reading. If Joe's happy with that for Victober.